we are trying um, to go live tonight with Shantae. She is a donor to his rock star that I have invited here to talk to you tonight. So um, tonight I wanted to, I was talking with some friends of mine recently and we were talking about donors choose and what a great, um, what a great vehicle it is for teachers and how a lot of teachers out there are really using it um, in great ways to help fund their classrooms because everybody here knows right that teachers don't get what they need in their classrooms year after year after year um and don't have to choose has really just leveled the playing field and playing field and changed that for a lot of teachers now i know that a lot of you here work in programs that are not eligible for donors choose and that's okay because we have some alternatives for you so tom is going to be dropping some links in the comments tonight um, i have a blog post all about donors choose success so if you're new to donors choose or just starting out or you're interested or thinking about it you can read that blog post with some tips and then if you don't work in a public pre-k program okay if you're not in a public school or you're not in a head start then um, tom will drop a link to the eligibility requirements for donors choose so you can see what those are and then they actually give you three other alternatives that you can use if your program that you work in is not eligible for donors choose grants so let's see shantae's coming back okay now. i came back you came back. But hey, can you hear me now? Fortunately, I still can't hear anything. Oh no! So should we go to plan? You can B? Definitely text me the questions, and I'll okay. try to answer them the best that I can. Okay, that sounds good. So I am going to type the question. Sorry. Questions. That's okay. I'm going to type the questions in for Shante, and then she will answer on the screen. So let's see. Um, I type fast, so this will go well. <laughs> so she's going to tell us a little okay. bit about what Donors so Choose is. So Donors Choose is a platform for public school teachers um, to be able to get what they need for their classroom. Um, it was started by a man named Charles Best. Um, he was a high school teacher uh, in the Bronx and he needed some uh, books for his classroom. And so um, he, you know, he thought about all of the money that teachers invest into their classrooms and he actually created this platform for teachers to, um, to use to be able to get supplies for their rooms. Uh, the way it works is we go online uh, to donorschoose.org. You uh, sign up, create a profile. Um, after you create your profile, um, you think about what supplies or materials you need for your students and you write a very quick proposal and people actually donate uh, funds uh, to your project and hopefully you get funded and your they send the class the materials to your class. Okay. All right. Um, I've had uh, quite a few things. I've gotten books for my students. Um, I got a DVD player, a 19 inch uh, TV. Um, I just got a Chromebook, um, a printer. I've gotten things for our dramatic play centers. Uh, we needed dramatic play clothes, uh, dramatic play food. Um, what else have I gotten? Games, manipulatives. Um, the list is endless. Okay, let's see. I've had now about 20 funded i started in 2005 um with like just a couple of projects and then i kind of just um forgot about it per se but then um i wanted to get some basic essentials for my class and one of the things that they had done uh donors shoes had done in the past few years is uh Amazon uh, became one of their vendors. So now you can uh, request student essentials, things like coats, food, deodorant, things that uh, a lot of our kids need in our urban underprivileged schools. That's great. Um, so I've had about 20 projects funded. 
um yeah. it, it's, it's for public schools mm -hmm. um so if the head start is like pu public state funded program then yes um but if it's private then no okay so um i'll address for those of you who don't work in that i'll address that so, in um uh, yeah, like I've gotten so many things from them. You don't, they don't always fund. Like sometimes, like I've had a few projects that have slipped through the cracks, but you know, for the most part, like you have to be active in promoting your project. So, what I do is once I write a proposal, um, I go on Twitter and I post the link for my project. Um, I put it on Facebook for family and friends to fund. Um, what else? Um, just by word of mouth, um, email, I email people. Um, I just recently became a Donors Choose Ambassador uh, to try to get teachers in my district in New York uh, to join. So I've been, uh, excuse me, uh, word of mouth to them putting flyers in their mailboxes, um, you know, things of that nature. And there are a lot of giving pages on Donors Choose dot com i'm sorry i'm just reading the questions from my phone okay so for people just getting started you want to keep the project cost very low so anything under five hundred dollars because if you like, come out with this ginormous thousand dollar two thousand dollar project it's less likely to get funded because the donors want to see where their money is going um, so that's one. Um, another thing is just promotion. Like I said, using Twitter, word of mouth. Some teachers uh, print business cards and pass them out to get started. Some teachers pass out flyers. I use social media, Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, and there are donors choose giving pages. So that's something else that you might want to look into. Um, let's see something else for donors choose. Um, and just being persistent. Um, and getting funded. Uh, some some um, projects are hit and miss. Sometimes there are so many teachers posting projects that a lot do get, you know, uh, a, a lot of people miss projects. Forgive me, I'm getting a little bit nervous. Um, but uh, yeah, but just be active in promoting your project. Thank you, packets. Yes, it's interesting because for the little ones, it's a little bit harder to create like thank you notes. So what's been happening with me is that a lot of the times the donors will choose for the students not to write the thank you notes. So that's been a blessing in disguise. So I go online to donors choose and I write a thank you note. And then I take pictures. So they request like five or six pictures of your project in action so that the donors can see how the materials are being used. Um, if we do have to write a thank you note, then what I usually do is um, I'll write one on chart paper with the kids, like a shared writing, and then I let the kids sign it. And then during center time, I have about five or six kids come over and draw pictures of them using the project. Um, you know, using the materials of the project, and then I'll just send them off like that. So that's something um, I've seen teachers do um, where they have the kids, you know, just do their handprint and write a thank you notes. I've seen teachers uh, write out the words thank you on like construction paper and they have the kids hold them up and they take pictures like that. Um, I'm not so creative with my thank yous. Uh, so that is something, but that's something I need to improve on. But um, it's pretty simple for pre-K because I'm finding that most donors don't require pre-K uh, to actually write thank you notes. Uh, can you write one for a group of teachers, stuff to be used? Um, I think, I'm not so sure about this one. I've heard of uh, teachers getting together to do projects. Um, I don't know how those are with funding because because I'm pretty sure that the dollar amount is bigger. So I'm pretty sure that that is something you can do. You can get together with uh, colleagues and write, um, but just be mindful of the dollar amount, you know, in terms of how quickly you like to get funded. Okay, guys. I hope that I introduced. I hope that I introduced Shante. I wish I could hear. <laughs> I hope that I introduced Shante well enough. I know we're having this little technical glitch here, but 
I was prepared for that because that's what you get with free platforms. Um, so I wanted to let you know about a few resources that we have for you as you get started, if you're interested in getting started with Donors Choose. I'm not affiliated with Donors Choose at all. Um, so I just wanted to let teachers know that I have some resources you can use to make Donors Choose grants um, yourself to make it easier. So first we have my blog post about how to be successful with Donors Choose. It has a lot of the tips that Shantae talked about. So you're going to want to go there, visit that, and um, bookmark that, pin it, whatever. Um, then the eligibility. We keep getting the question about eligibility. So you are eligible if you work in a public school, whether you're teaching pre-K, kinder, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or Head Start that is run by the school district. And they have it very laid out for you on their site at Donors Choose. It makes it very clear. So Tom will drop the eligibility link for you. They also have three alternatives if you are not in a public pre-K or Head Start program. So if, you, if that doesn't apply to you, I know Cindy asked, um, if that doesn't apply to you, that's okay, all right? So um, you can check out those three um, links that that donors choose has for you. Okay, um, project ideas. So project ideas. I'm going to pop a link here to Shante um, because I want her to see this too. Um, mm -hmm. On my category page, my favorites. So I have like 12 posts all about the different um, things that you might write a grant about. You have a specific um, topic for your grant and um, these lists will help you make your grant. And as Shante said, now Amazon is an eligible vendor for donors choose. So um, all of these things that I have, all of these lists of ideas for grants, um, they all have links to Amazon in them. So it will really help you write your grant. So I think that will be super help, helpful for you. And the most important thing is that you can pay for the teaching tribe with donors choose funds. Ah, I know you're all out there going, what? Yes. So donors choose has a special thing. Let me go over here and make sure that I'm getting all of the info correct. So um, if you have six points on Donors Choose, like Shantae has six points because she's written a lot of grants, right? You get a certain amount of points. Um, if you have six points, you can write a special vendor request. And the Teaching Tribe qualifies as a special vendor request. So that is what I wanted to tell you about. Tom is dropping links to those for you below if you want to learn how it works. So I'm going to bring Shantae back on. Okay. And matching grants. Let's talk about matching grants. Have you had any of those? Yes. <laughs> um, you always want to be on the lookout for matches. Um, last summer, I was getting funded uh, through the PNC match just for pre-K teachers. So that was um, a really good um, match. Um, for uh, one, one million day, they had matches all day. The uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they are always uh, coming on occasionally and doing matches. Um, who else? Dick Sporting Goods is doing matches right now. Um, who else? It's, it's quite a few, but yes, you always want to check periodically, um, for matches because, um, you have a lot of the times where they do double the projects. The quickest I've ever had a grant funded. I have to say in a matter of two days, I've gotten funded uh, for a basic essential uh, student essential project. Um, you know, the longest has been about a month or so, but the quickest has been like two, two, three days. That's awesome. Kim had one funded in two days. Way to go, Kim. 
Um, nice. Yes. Oh, there's a good one. STEM. Yes. Wow. We have a STEM post at Pre-K Pages. Um, let's see. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anything, any parting? Let's see. Okay. Um, just to um, really take advantage of this platform, what I'm finding uh, is even as an ambassador, I am constantly reaching out to teachers um, in my district, in my school, and a lot of teachers are not really utilizing this platform, but it's such an awesome way to get materials for our students. You know, I used to come out of pocket a lot before I had my daughter. And then once I had my daughter, um, I wasn't able to spend as much um, in my classroom. And so then that's when I really started to utilize donors choose. And if you really get into it, um, you can, you know, you get a lot of things. There are people who are very willing to donate towards education and students and educators. So just take advantage of donors choose. Um, yes, they do uh, definitely fund books. Like I said, Amazon is a vendor, uh, so you can definitely get books through them. Excuse me. Um, they have another vendor also that does uh, level libraries. Um, I got a class set of books uh, for my when I taught kindergarten. I think Scholastic level readers I received. So they definitely uh, do uh, books. Wonderful. Um, they okay. fund just about anything. <laughs> um, even you can even do special request projects where if you want to attend PD in another state, um, you write a proposal and you request a a special project, you can do that. Um, whatever needs that you have for the classroom, office supplies, you know, we, we use things like chart paper, tape, scissors, glue, you know, we use those things so often too. So you can write a proposal for those basic essentials instead of running out in the summer and catching those deals um, like we always do. Um, they fund just about anything, technology. Um, I have two projects out now, one for a new sensory table because the one that we have is really old. And then um, what's the other one? Oh, I wanna start doing coding and robotics with the kids. That's a totally new realm for us. So I put a project for the b -Bot and um, the little caterpillar thingy. So um, they fund tons and tons and tons of resources. Okay, guys. So, Shante, thank you so, thank you so much, Shante, for coming on tonight and sharing your donors choose experience hey guys. with us. Hi, thank you so much. I'm sorry. I wish my volume worked, but That's okay. it was a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Shante. She is such a joy. Um, I am so grateful to her for um, coming on tonight. Um, Stephanie is talking about, uh, or asking about, um, she only got funding, she only got funding, she only got funding from her family and she didn't get funding from anyone else. That's why I wrote this blog post, um, Stephanie. So go to the blog post at Pre-K Pages, how to uh, successfully fund your donors choose grant. And it lists step by step everything that you should do to make sure that your grant is funded. It has to be very specific. It can't be generic. It needs to have a smoking title. Um, it needs to talk about the students that you have in your class, why they need this, and how these things are going to help them succeed with whatever it is. So like Shante talked about, books for a certain topic or project. Um, books for your classroom library. Um, we have ideas over on that blog post. Some people might, it's all the centers, right? All of that category at Pre-K Pages of all the centers, the favorites that I shared before. Um, let me share that in the link. Here's the book lists, okay? So all, uh, well, I didn't mean to put it on screen. <laughs> I wanted it to show up in the comments. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> so all of the book lists 
at pre-K pages, um, you can use those to, you can write a grant for, I want to do a hibernation unit with my kids. And here are the books we need. We also want to do some STEM projects, you know, so you're doing like a hibernation grant or whatever, you know, I want books for the beginning of the year. I want books to help teach my kids phonological awareness skills. I want books about math books about STEM and science, books about, you name it. So use those book lists at Pre-K Pages. And then all of those favorites at Pre-K Pages, there is a page that I have or a post for each of the centers in the classroom and my favorite materials. You can use those pages to guide your grants. So over on the blog post, we talk about ideas that you might use uh, for your grants, books, flexible seating, centers, sensory. Shante was talking about how she's getting a new sensory table. You could totally do a grant for your sensory table and the sensory tools. Um, art supplies. A lot of people don't have the money for the disposable stuff, you know, that you get at the dollar store. You know, you go in the dollar store, you, you intend to spend five bucks and you come out with 20 because, you know, your kids need paper and glue and all that stuff. Uh, playground equipment. Now, Shante did talk about how to keep them keeping the number low. So you might have to do specific grants for small things um, or playground equipment, meaning things that you can carry outside in tubs and bags and so forth. So we have those ideas for projects for you. Um, and then we talk about the matching, the funding. So it's really helpful to know when certain companies are gonna be matching grants that donors choose. And so a lot of times that will happen around Christmas, just before Christmas, some companies will actually give their employees um, money to donate. So I know of local companies here in Texas where they have given their employees, each employee gets like a $50 voucher or something that they then choose where they want to donate that money to donors choose. And the money comes from the company like Texas Instruments or something. Um, so they'll do a lot of matching grants. And then, of course, you have, like she said, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. You've got Sonics Lime Aids for Learning. You've got uh, famous people like Stephen Colbert funded the entire state of South Carolina one year. Uh, he's done it a couple of times, I think. He just goes in, donors choose, and pays for all the grants in the one state. Um, so you never know when you're going to get those uh, matching funds. Um, Melissa said January 25th was a big matching um, day too. Yes. Good point, Melissa. Um, is Head Start available? Yes. Um, so on the eligibility page, donors choose. They will tell you if your Head Start program is eligible. Okay. So it can't be early Head Start. All right. So go to the eligibility page and it will talk about if your Head Start program is um, eligible for donors choose. Okay. Um, and then another thing, so you want to look for those matching. You want to know when those matching days are going to happen. Kind of get an idea for that. Back to school is huge. Um, back to school time, then that could be any time from August on. Um, a lot of places will be matching grants, okay? And then, of course, um, we saw a lot of grants uh, being matched after Hurricane Harvey here in Texas. Um, and then you want to make sure that your grant has things like a picture. You must have a picture on your grant, okay? It's kind of like on Facebook. If you don't have a picture of your face on your Facebook account, people think you're fake. So you must have a picture on your grant page. Um, a title is really important, okay? Um, look at the titles on um, the magazines at the checkout stand in the grocery store. They have titles that catch you and grab you, right? Um, try to th think of ways to change those titles around, but make them pre-K, preschool appropriate. Um, and then, um, and I give you some examples in the blog post of what a good title is and what a bad title is. Um, but you have to keep the whole project focused on your students, right? The project is about your kids, um, their needs, why do they need this, and how are these things going to help them? If you can be very clear and concise about who your kids are, right? how these things are going to help them, why they need them. That's going to really help your grant get funded. Um, you're going to want to use clear, simple terms. You're going to want to avoid jar educational jargon. So if you're going to talk about STEAM or STEM, you're going to want to spell that out for them um, in your grant because not everyone knows what those words mean. Um, 
your your like Shante already told us, your focus needs to be very clear and specific. So writing this big general grant for stuff, like we need stuff, we need everything. We know you need everything. We're teachers, we all need everything. But try to focus your grants. So maybe start with the area of your classroom that's in the most extreme need and then go on and then slowly over time fund the other things. Um, and Shante talked about now that Amazon's a vendor, you can actually ask for things for your kids. And this is really amazing. I think this is fabulous. Um, unfortunately, the district I worked in didn't didn't participate with donors choose they chose not to i don't know why anyone would do that but they did at the time i was there and i was very sad because if i could get my kids coats and food well my goodness all my problems you know half my problems would be solved um let's see what else research so go on donors choose and look at projects that were just funded that were funded successfully in short periods of time Go on and look and see what those teachers did differently from you. So, Stephanie, if you have a hard time getting your projects funded, um, think about the need of your um, your classroom. So it, when you work in those high risk areas like Shante did and like, like Shante does and I did, um, then you're going to have a better um, chance. A lot of people look to donate locally, too. So when I go to, to Donors Choose, I do donate there. Um, a, I usually donate at the holidays, so there you know that's that's the secrets out there. Um, but uh, people will look for grants locally because they want to help people locally. So um, they'll go in and they'll look and they'll see what's local. So even if you don't uh, teach in a high needs area, sometimes people will fund grants that are just local to them, so that can help too. But look for a successful grant and then um, use that as inspiration for your grant. Um, let's see what else. Um, and Shante, Shante already told us the secret is social media. And I've had people say in the comments here and, and other times, we've talked about donors choose a lot over in our free Facebook group, Preschool Teachers Are Superheroes, which is where I know Shante from. Um, I think we talked a lot about donors choose and, and a lot of people have said, well, I don't, I don't qualify. That's okay because there are other options. These same strategies apply on these other platforms like donors choose. You may not have as many matching opportunities, but the same, all these same things we're laying out for you here apply. But social media is the key. And when you share it on social media, your goal isn't to get your mom or your dad or your aunts, uncles, cousins, or grandparents to donate. It's when they in turn share it. So if your mom then shares it. So for example, my mom often shares donors choose grants on her personal profile and I'll see it and I'll go, oh, well, that's a good one. You know, if she sees a grant that catches her eye, she's, you know, she's retired and sometimes she browses there for fun uh, and then she shares it. And then I'm like, oh, I'll donate. You know, it didn't have anything to do with me. It wasn't, you know, and sometimes she found it because one of her friend's granddaughters wrote the grant or something, you know, um, so it just kind of spirals like that. Do you see how that works? Um, so Shante said the first thing she does is she goes on Twitter. OK, and um, for me, I like I like Facebook, so I'd probably do it there. Instagram, you know, I don't know. Just try it and see what happens. But don't be discouraged if your first project didn't get funded. Anytime something isn't a success, always examine it. Look at it and see how you can tweak it and make it better using these tips that we have for you here. And of course, the most exciting thing, the most exciting news that we have is that you can use Donors Choose if you have six points and you get points in Donors Choose for each grant that you get funded. Um, and they walk you through that process and how to do that. But if you have six points, you can then um, request a special request project in a special request project. They, they lay it all out for you there on the site, but the teaching tribe qualifies as a special request project. So we have it all set up for you um, that you can now um, go on the teaching tribe and you can, if you have six points and donors choose, you can write a grant for um, the teaching tribe membership. So it's only for annual, not for the monthly, because then you'd have to write a grant every month. That would be silly. <laughs> you have better things to do than that. So it's only for the annual subscription. Um, but I definitely think that's a great option for a lot of you. And if you're not in the public school, there are other options. So I know Sherry was asking, um, Cindy was asking, look at those other options. I've even seen public school teachers on GoFundMe. Anyone can do a GoFundMe. Um, so you can, might consider that as well. Another idea for those of you that um, have in-home childcares 
that I have donated to before for that purpose. Um, it has a really cool name. I'll have to think of it and drop it in the comments. But it's um, a grant writing. Um, so people write grants and then people like me donate. But they also had a section for it's for businesses owned by women. Um, so I would like donate uh, like money for someone to buy a sewing machine in uh, name a country, you know, uh, a third world country. Um, but then they started opening up it up to uh, women who are struggling in the U.S. And so then I would was able to donate to child cares that way. So I have to think of the name of it, though. Tom will know because he knows I donate there. Um, I can't think of the name of it for the life of me. Anne-Marie says, look, look for those matching grants. Um, Melissa says, if something needs clarifying, they will ask you to fix it. If donors choose. They're very good about that. That's good. Um, Vanika, the program uh, Donors Choose is for public schools and Head Starts, but if you are not in that boat, then there are other options. Donors Choose actually tells you where to go um, to look for those other options. And Deborah, Head Start is eligible, not Early Head Start. Um, I don't have ideas for outside play yards, but if you go on Donors Choose, I bet there are lots. So type in, Donors Choose is US-based, so type in Playground um, and see what you get. Um, Becky's talking about Osmo. So one of the things Shante talked about earlier was how she's trying to get uh, a grant right now for coding and things like that. And Osmo is one of those things. Um, all right. So I hope that those, um, those tips that Shante shared with you tonight will be helpful to you as you get started. Um, on your Donors Choose journey or on one of the other platforms that helps fund grants for teachers, whether you're an in-home child care provider or private faith-based organization or whatever. I hope that these tips will help you. These tips will work across all platforms. So make sure you check out that blog post at Pre-K Pages. It's actually a really old blog post, but um, I thought we'd give it some new life since I have all of these resources you can use to help write these grants. So I want to thank everyone for watching. We'll be back Wednesday night here on the Pre-K Pages Facebook page for our regularly scheduled broadcast, which is every Monday and Wednesday, 7 Central, 8 Eastern. I appreciate you joining me tonight a little early. Um, I wanted to be able to have Shante on, and this was the best time for her. So I appreciate your flexibility. We're all preschool teachers, and we know how to be flexible. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and have a great night. Bye.